Hey everyone, Sir Turbo here again. If you're looking to climb ranks fast, then I have the deck for you. Pirate Aggro is probably one of the strongest decks in the current meta in my opinion because of how fast it can finish games and how consistent it can be after the addition of cards like Traveler's Feast into this pile. So if you haven't been playing any Pirate Aggro yet, maybe because it's an old boring deck, I want to change your mind here because it is a really good deck right now, especially when you have a lot of like Rise that still shows up. You have a lot of these awkward, slow kind of combo decks that cannot deal with the aggression. As you've seen by some of the videos that I have posted throughout this week, we are kind of like a more aggressive meta and Pirate Aggro is one of those decks that does very well in this in this type of meta right so what are the things that i'm playing in this pirate aggro list it's a lot of one drops right you kind of see here we have 15 so 15 different one drops the crimson pigeon is probably your best one because if the opponent doesn't have an answer for a crimson pigeon doesn't have something that has three power to block it this crimson pigeon is going to continue growing more and more so you have like Crimson Pigeon, Saboteur, Rear Guard, those are usually the ones that you want to see first. Shell Shock gives you the mana, which will let you combo off with stuff like Reveler's Feast. The reason we're playing so many one drops is because, again, we have access to this card, Reveler's Feast, which means that having a white board will actually be a huge threat now against almost every single opponent that you might go against. Then we go to the two jobs, and similar to the one jobs, we have a lot of two jobs that can let us fill our board, House Spider and Mariah Warden. For the same reason where Reveler's Fist can come in clutch and allow you to just board, uh, full, uh, buff the full board and just go much wider in the opponent. Then we have our classic champions, Miss Fortune, Twisted Pay, Miss Fortune for the damage that you can do with her, and Twisted Pay, the utility, whichever way, whichever way you might need it, red, gold card, blue card, it'd be really useful in any matchup. Sass Prayfin is amazing because it can draw us the fervor or the feast. Now that we are playing Feast, you're not guaranteed to draw the Fervor every single time, but that's okay. That is also why we're on three Fervors instead of triple Feast, because I think it's slightly better this way. Uh, then we go for some other utility controls like Ana Kaboro so that we don't run out of resources. And finally, we finish up with our burn, Fervor, Decimate, and two Reveler's Feast. The deck is so consistent at doing what it needs to do. You're going to literally win really quick by turn four, five, or if it gets further than that, that's when you actually start having a lot of issues and you have to kind of rely on, on top decking some burn to actually be able to finish up the games. But a lot of decks cannot deal with just the sheer aggression that you can do with this deck. And honestly, all you need to do is just mulligan for your wanders. We have so many of them that even if you don't have a wand up in your hand, you're very lucky to draw at least one, allowing you to set up for a good turn one, turn two, open attack so that you can actually push damage into the opponent. But that's enough for me. Hope you enjoyed the games coming soon. We have a lot of games today. We have like eight games because when I say that these games go fast, I mean they go fast. I think we have like eight games as it's still going to be one of our shortest videos that we have released this week. So enjoy the games coming up soon. And if you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. Uh, I'll see you at the end of the video for some more mulligan tips. In this match, we're going to against Victor Master G with PNC. So they do tend to usually play the Eye of the Dragon, right? So I do need to be careful about that. I really like the Anaka Boros a lot of times in this type of matchups. Hmm. Well, maybe it's better to just kind of go super wide. I'm going to give you the Butcher. I'm going to see if I can find a way to go really wide. Just the Fetty's not bad, because if the opponent blocks here, I'm, I'm fine. Crimson Pigeon is not the best, because we don't have anything that we can actually hit the Crimson Pigeon with. So we'll go here. If the opponent has added the dragon, even if they block with the Shell Shocker, it just sets me up for Twisted Fate to be able to kill it. Better go here. Obviously, I'm not going to support. I'm just going to attack. Or force the Mystic out of them here. That's also fine. Yeah, that's also fine. We still push the same amount of damage as if we didn't summon it. Our hand is a little bit awkward. Uh, might actually need to draw with okay that's that's it that makes it a little bit better that makes it a lot better as long as i don't low roll here and we don't low roll actually we do the opposite of low roll that's a that's a pretty good high roll question is is it, is it ever the open attack nope it's gonna always be misfortune now so now it's always gonna be misfortune now the opponent whatever the opponent summons we still can attack with everything and have fervor as well. So the fervor will allow me to trigger this this sentinel. 
Life steal? Really? I think I might just press OK here. I might just press OK here. Because you're still going to get your Master G to go to 1 and we still have Twisted Fate. Yeah, I think we just press OK here, right? I guess I could push more damage by playing the Mirai Warden. But then I'm losing to like a Mystic. I think I'm okay with pressing the okay here. I'm just gonna red card the twisted fa uh, the, the master G and then next time we have Reveler's Feast now. Yeah, so that we just go here. Master G dies anyways, we deal one to everything. We open with everything, we have Reveler's Feast, Fervor, Decimate. Doesn't matter that you get your flow. I guess the opponent getting flow is a little bit unfortunate. I'm also putting my units in range of like a Mystic Shot when I press the Reveler's Feast. Opponent didn't hit a Lifesteal here, so I guess the opponent could have access to um, Unworthy Soul, right? That would, be the, that would be what they need. I think we just go Saboteur. I think we just go Super Wide. Because we have the Reveler's Feast, I think we just go as wide as possible. Let the opponent do whatever they want, and that's game. There's nothing that they have for one mana that's going to stop this lethal attack. Even if you get lifesteal, we can just fervor. Actually, I don't even know lifesteal saves them anyways. Like, I really don't. We can also trigger the Sentinel by sacrificing our own Reveler's Feast target. Like, if the opponent has, like, a Mystic Shot here. They have to do something, right? We don't even, we don't even need to play any of this. So let's say the opponent plays like Mystic Shot on the on the on here. Oh, there we go. Worthy so we just go Reveler's Feast. This triggers the Slay, making this actually plus four. And that's game. Regis. It's pretty nice when you can kind of go super wide on, on opponents like this that are playing slower decks. In this match, we're going to get six Talia. Agri does very well against all the Shirima piles, so this should be a good matchup for us. I like the tr the double pigeon. I feel like I need something to go with them. Do I need to keep the Shell Shocker? That's a risk. That's a serious risk that I don't get the rear guard here, right? Yeah, that's a serious risk that I don't get the rear guard there. I'm, I'm such a good gamer, guys. I'm actually such a good gamer. This is still a little bit awkward, though, right? Because the, the pigeon just gonna die to the rock hopper. So if the opponent has the rock hopper here. Where's my axe? Otherwise, this is gonna be a crazy attack. All right. I'm such a good gamer, and opponent didn't get the rock hopper. We will lose one here, and opponent got pokey stick for this one. Yeah, opponent has the pokey stick, so we only still push three. But getting this pigeon to 3 HP is not bad. It's not bad, because he can continue growing and be a threat against the opponent. So it wasn't Rock Copper, it was Pokey Stick. Fine. I don't think I ever blocked that, right? Because I don't want them to get a lot of value from that. I would have loved to have this last turn. But that's okay. Can go here. If opponent doesn't block here, I'm okay with that. We just get to push four. If they block like this, we still push two and we still get to keep our pigeon alive. Oh, you're gonna absorb that? Am I okay with that? I think so, right? Hmm. Now, the problem is gonna be Talia, right? The opponent's obviously gonna have Talia here to copy the sarcophagus. So I'm gonna be worrying about the sarcophagus for the rest of the game. Double, uh, the double restore devout, sorry. I'm gonna actually, I can play Sap and potentially get access to the Reveler's Feast. And if I get Reveler's Feast, that's probably gonna be the best thing that can happen instead of getting a second Fervor. So if we go Misfortune, that's three mana. We play Shell Shocker, we still have two mana that we carry over. And we get six. We play this, yeah, this is Talia, like we expect it. Opponent could easily also have a Rattle of Arcane next turn. 
So here's the thought. Do we actually go for the Reveler's Feast potential and get punished by the Ride of Arcane? Well, I don't need to go for any more, right? If the opponent has Ride of Arcane, they get to kill the Misfortune and also bring their units. Wow. So the opponent took that because they played around the Ride of Arcane. The problem is that you went to four, you didn't play around the, 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 the Destiny, right? So I understand why the opponent did it, but you still went down to four and I still have a Destiny in my hand. Like, the opponent did it because they wanted to play around this card, right? They wanted to play around the regular Feast. If they block and able to regular Feast and just have Lethal on the spot, the problem is that we had enough to take it down to four, and that's all that I needed to just win the game, so GG's. In this match, we're going against Fiora Shen. So, Fiora Shen... Um, hmm. No one drop is a little bit awkward. The Fiora is kind of scary, though. You can need to put more pressure on them. I like the Marai Warden, but I also kind of feel like going for a more, for one drop. So I'm going to have Mulligan for everything, just so that I could potentially get my one drop. Yes, Rhaegar. So now this, this is a much better hand, right? Because the opponent's going to have a much harder time dealing with this than if I had the other hand that I had before. Um, the Caretaker is, doesn't even get to block here, so that's great. We have two options here. I'm going to play second Rhaegar. Let the opponent play another one of these if they want to. I don't want to lose the pigeon. Okay, perfect. I mean, if you're going to go like that, that's cool with me. Here's my question. Is there a three job that I'm scared of? I don't think so. I think I'm going to go all in. I'm going to go all in and just go as wide as I can. I'm also going to use it on... This guys, I don't want these rear guards to die. I want I prefer this guy to die instead. We also could uh, we gotta get the crimson pigeon alive by right by by blocking with one of these guys. That's fine though. Yeah, we could we probably it probably was better to keep the crimson pigeon alive by having one of these guys be the blocker. Uh I I, I missed I missed that order here. Okay, my pigeon still dies anyways. Only steal goes down to 11, and all we have is just two rear guards, which are still pretty good on their own, though, so I'm not complaining. We can sap, or we can twist the fate, either way. Let the opponent pull if they want to, and then we can twist the fate red card. Nope, opponent decides not to pull, in which case, I think I'm just gonna stun. So I like the stun here, just so that we can push damage through. He also puts the Fiora in a position where she can't really kill anything. With our barrier. Even if the opponent has a Shen here, I think I'm fine with that. I'm just gonna go as wide as I can. Because we have burn now. So we have the burn now, so I don't care. Whatever you do here, I don't care. If you go to four, you lose to a decimate potentially. Uh that's not gonna work, unfortunately, my friend. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I like the attempt, but we have Fervor in our hand. It's a, it's a good attempt, right? If I don't have Fervor, that actually gets into heal 3. It's, a, it's an amazing block. But we do have the Sab now, right? I'm gonna just press OK. If the opponent doesn't do anything here, I'm just gonna press OK to play around a second Spirit's Refuge. So I just wanna play around a second Spirit's Refuge here. Opponent has to pre-commit it if they have it. Killing Twisted Fate is worse than killing the rear guard, by the way. Every single time. Just because of the fact that we could obviously have another Twisted Fate to kill your Kinko student and do the last point of damage that we need. I'm gonna keep the Fervor for next turn. I'm just gonna go wide here with the Mirai. Keep force the opponent to have to do something else before we have to do the Fervor. Yeah, and there we go. It's, it's, it's even do the purple last turn, opponent can have another strike, right? Single combat of Concerto, or could also just have deny. So by keeping the purple for now, I force them into a position where they have to be the ones to ask to do something first before we have to do the fervor. So GG's. In this match, we're going against Aphelios Victor and Zoe. 
So this matchup tend to be a little bit ooh, a little bit awkward just because the opponent is able to have a lot of PNC removal. I think I wanna go for a much earlier hand, and there we go. We end up getting a pretty good early hand here. Um What are the chances that they have thermal? I think they're pretty high. Because it could be thermal or it could be soy, right? To be able to block the savager. The only thing that punishes the rear guard would have been that 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 uh, that two one. So I think we go for it this way. I think I'm also willing to block here. No question about it. Ah, uh, do we play the misfortune? I think we do play the misfortune. Yeah, this is this is looking really rough now. I think I like the misfortune. Because opponent could have well, opponent could have Aphelios, but if they play Aphelios, they cannot block with Aphelios. They could have Mystic for the Savature, but then the misfortune still goes through. Yeah, if this Aphelios, I'm attacking with everything. Now the Aphelios obviously has its own problems. That's why it's gonna be it's gonna be important that we get a fervor here so that we can actually dodge the Aphelios lifesteal weapon. Now there's a chance that the opponent didn't go for the lifesteal weapon here. And if they didn't, then that could be good for us. Hmm. Can I see her? Let's go sap. We get the fervor, that way if the opponent did go for the lifesteal, we're able to just punish it. Okay, now they just went for Calibrum. They just went for Calibrum. It's a little bit awkward again, we don't have a lot of value here. We'll have to let this go. We'll go Shell Shocker. Might go Misfortune so that I can keep access to the fervor. I'm gonna go Savatro first. I want the opponent to tap out at 3 mana, just in case that they have access to get excited. Okay, they don't have access to get excited, or if they do, they, they purposely played it to wait for it. This will let me trade with the whole board without sacrificing my units. We tap out of the fervor, but I think that's okay. And we do the same thing again, right? We force the opponent to trade with the sump draggers. Because if they don't trade with the Sun Dragon here, they also have to trade with the rest of their units, otherwise they're taking more damage. If they take all this damage like this just to keep the units alive, then this is going to be 7 damage. Okay, that's what I thought. That is what I thought. Still going to be a little bit dicey, but I'm forcing them to keep a lot of units out of their field. It seems like they're 3 sets, 10. 1 off, we have 2 here. It seems like the opponent's playing more of like the old style Aphelios Victor type of decks. So I attack with everything here because this is pushing an additional 2 damage if one of these goes through. We should put the opponent at 7, which means that a decimate and a single purple finishes the game. So now a decimate and a single fervor finishes the game, and we'll be able to have double fervor. I want to have the butcher. Okay, we lose the decimate. That's unfortunate. So now we're back to needing one more burn spell. Yeah, I'm not gonna play fervor on the shell shocker because that's too easy to get punished by like a mystic shot. Uh, the problem is that the opponent could have access to a, a overwhelm here. I need one more damage. If they get to lifesteal, we just lose the game. Yeah, losing that decimate was huge. That I loot travelers was not what I expected. There's a good chance that the opponent just has access to the... Okay, they seem like they don't. They need to go for the overwhelm. Yeah, they need to go for the overwhelm. Because if they don't play the overwhelm... That's still going to be six. I think that's game, actually. I think opponent was able to stabilize. The fact that they were able to get the aloof travelers, if it wasn't for the aloof, we have a chance. But they got the aloof and got the uh We could also have gotten the stun, right? Like imagine if we had Twisted Fate here. So Twisted Fate would have been good. Um, 
Will I play the fervor beforehand? It's gonna be 13. We go six. Yeah, I think that's game. I don't think there's any way for us to come back from that deal. If I had twisted fate, we could have stunned. Or also could have just done the red card. We just needed one more point of damage, so it is. In this match, we're going against Kale Garen. So it's going to be kind of like an elite, right? Which means that they will have a lot of, like, blockers. Which makes Misfortune really good, to be honest. It does make Misfortune better, how oh, we got the Decimate back. Because it lets me kind of get more, a little bit more favorable traits, even though the opponent is going to have a pretty big but we'll board presence we start with crimson pagan here if we get like a legion a legion um uh, at the three the, the three two we could potentially oh perfect rear guard there we go we could potentially just go super wide instead of playing the house fighter opponents never gonna block with the battlesmith so if they don't block here they're gonna be taking all this damage if they actually don't block here they're gonna go down to 11 and the game just started this is only turn two and opponents already down to 11. Uh, I guess they could go for like a super wide board if they have like the one drop, one drop. Yeah, if they have the Hound. If they have the Hound, okay. They cannot go for it anymore, right? It had to be the Hound into the... What's it called? Uh, the Hound into the, the, three, the three drops that get discounted. We could go wide, or we could just go here, and I think it's always better to just go like this. Yeah, I think it's just better to open attack. Uh, we push an additional 2 damage, which takes into 9. This unit goes through, which takes into 7, and we have exactly 7 in hand for burn. The opponent is going to have to have access to a single combat or a concerted strike to actually punish this. If they go like this, then they just straight up lose to Decimate without needing the fervor. They need to block. They need to sacrifice. Wow. I, I'm, 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 I'm flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted that the opponent is really just keeping this Battlesmith alive. We might actually just go for Fervor now. Mm. Yeah, let's just go. I, I do I even need to. I guess we can just Decimate, right? Yeah, we can just decimate. We can just play house spider so that we have blockers, so that we like saved against anything. For some reason, I thought that we were at more than four HP because I got distracted trying to do something on my other screen real quick. But uh, yeah, they're 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 dead. They're dead. <laughs> as long as I had the six mana, they were dead. So playing the house spider I just gives me blocker. Imagine if they actually would have blocked with it. I guess they still die though. They still die to the Decimate plus Fervor, but at least they have the out of having a single combat as a backup, so GG's. In this match, we're going against Barrow's Pantheon. Another deck that is a little bit weak to aggro. Um, I like the Rear Guards. I don't think I like the House Spider. I think I'm going to go Rear Guard, potentially two Rear Guards, or Marai Warden. Depending on what I get on the next turn. We get the house spider back anyways. Hmm. Need a second. So, if the opponent has the two drop, okay, yeah, I have to go rear guard, rear guard. I have to force him to have the two drop. Right? Divine Clerk. That's a pale cascade if I ever seen one. But that's still not gonna save you. You could pale, you get to heal three. But I still, I don't think that's enough. I still don't think that's enough because you're still trading, right? You're still trading with everything. I also probably should have put the, yeah, I should have put the saboteur first, by the way, because the opponent is always willing to block the saboteur and not the other stuff. Option here, our misfortune first, which I like. My right ward is second in case that we get like a. In case that we get a, a ephemeral, look at that. This is why we play Mariah second instead of playing her last turn. Exactly for this. I can't believe that. What BS? What BS is that? I'm attacking with everything through misfortune. I don't really care. You want to block her with the second back guy? That's cool. You're still going all the way down to four. We get to play our butcher after. 
Uh, we still pretty wide against the opponent. We have another guarantee damage here. I can't believe we actually got... Like, that's the reason why I always prepare to put him right on our attack turn. Just for that reason. And the fact that it happened while I was recording, what are the chances of that? He's a great attacker. Uh, we have Fervor plus one here. That's going to be lethal. Yeah, this looks like lethal to me. I'm going to play the house party. Just go even wider. There's no way that you beat this board. I don't have to block. I really don't have to block. Yeah, you can put that in there. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Opponent knows. Opponent knows that they're facing down six units next turn. We know way to deal with them. Even if they have a furious will there. Or unforgiving call. So. GG's. In this matchup, we're going against Talia Lissandra. So, Thralls. Ooh, unless they get their... I think opponent's going to have a hard time dealing with us. I, I kind of like the sap. I kind of like the sap. I think I really have a good enough early hand with Shell Shocker and Mariah Warden that the sap could potentially show... Potentially have a lot of value with, between the Fervor or the Revelers Feast. Oh, this, this is even better. I think we're going to go Shell Shocker first. And I, I'm debating between the Mariah and the Crimson Pigeon. It's going to depend on what I draw this turn. I think I like the Crimson Pigeon. I think I like the idea of having... Uh, but I also like the Mirai. But the Mirai could low roll, right? So this is more guaranteed damage. My Pigeon is going to go to 3 HP, which means that it's not going to die to an Avalanche. Uh, so I think it's better to just take this now. Since when? Since when did you play that in this deck? Rolling sense? Excuse me? So you just took seven damage just like that? Am, am I getting like fooled by the Relier and it's just gonna be a Shirima deck? Because that's even better for us. Alright. Uh yeah, let's just go Mirai. <laughs> Let you kill the newbie if you want to. Why kill the newbie and not the butcher? Yeah, I was going to say, why kill the newbie and not the butcher? I was going to be a little bit confused here. Okay, they are going to actually go for the newbie. Alright, let's just go butcher, and I'm just going to go wide again. Play it around the avalanche. I think playing around the avalanche is correct, especially since we have double burn in our hand. Opponent has to block this guy here. Otherwise, they're taking four. So they have to sacrifice the Lissandra, and they still take eight. Child. If they just go like this, then the purple just finishes the game. Okay, they can freeze. Ah, uh, freeze is cute. Let's go here. Yeah, let's go here first. Let's take advantage that we have the unit on the field. Let's go ahead and do the first fervor. Opponent will be able to kill this butcher by dragging it next turn. We can play the sap. We have another fervor. We opponent. Oh, or we can just red card, right? Ah, uh, okay. That that's that's unfortunate. So the opponent just did a really mean thing against us, which is heal. Healing is not fair. So healing is not fair. So let's just go here. We have two options. We can twist the fate or we can sap. The sap gives me the elusive uh right which is probably better we could also go red card but then i'm losing uh, uh, regardless of which way i do it i'm losing to uh i think i'm gonna open if i whichever way i play this i'm losing to an av uh, to an avalanche i think i'm just gonna open i think i'm just gonna open um and I'm gonna play Sap and just get my last fervor. Forcing the opponent to never be able to tap out. So they can never tap out a Rata Negation. Now I'm still losing to a Robin, right? Okay. Touch, 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 touch. I really don't wanna lose to a Robin. Okay, there's the ravine that we just talked about. 
if we just go further again we just go further again and just set up for next time opponent can nope because it's gonna discount the troll they don't actually get to summon anything else we can do two things we can go second sap and just threaten the lethal right here Opponent gets another Ravine. Let's just play Red Card. Force the opponent to have the Avalanche. Opponent still losing to a second Fervor that they think I have in my hand. So the opponent still loses to a second Fervor that they think I have in my hand. Um, I am losing to that. That also gets them there. We don't get the fervor, right? So the opponent, play, opponent played it really well. The triple rabin just completely blew us out. Yeah, the triple rabin just completely blew us out, right? The, the rabin is the way that you beat this matchup. And the opponent had exactly that. They also get to push 13 here. The Reveler's Feast are not doing anything because I'm not able to keep a board because of the rabins. We didn't draw that second fervor. And that's kind of all she wrote. Opponent gets to push six more damage, eight more damage, and that's 21. That was unfortunate. That was well played. That was very well played by the opponent, but the triple Rabin is really tough. I think the only thing is maybe that one turn where we played around Avalanche, probably didn't need to play around it because if the opponent is playing triple Rabin, they're probably not on triple on Avalanche. But I can, not, I can never predict that, right? The, the open attack was too good, even against the Avalanche. I guess that's not true because the opponent just was able to block with the, with the Lissandra, so GG's. In this match, we're going against Celia and Sarah. Usually, aggro decks like ours tend to do pretty well versus uh, sort of like this, this uh, Shuima piles. I'm actually going to get rid of the Butcher. Wanted to see if I could get like a lot more like one drops. Uh, we end up getting a lot of one drops. <laughs> we end up getting a lot of one drops. Uh, let's start with the Shell Shocker. Then we play Saboteur. We can even play Shell Shocker again. Because the, the thing about the Saboteur, right, is that if the opponent plays the Rock Copper, I'm okay eating. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There's no way, right? This is seven damage. Yeah, there we go. They were waiting for me to play the Saboteur before they played the Drop the Bomb. I was going to say, there's no way. This hand is actually not great for us, by the way, because we're completely out of value now. Okay, the house spider helps out. The house spider does help out. We can go super wide here, shell shock it and have Reveler's Feast. Question is, do we develop more? Opponent could have a way to... Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna develop. I'm gonna develop so that I can just take away both their units. I guess I don't take away both their units. The problem here is gonna be we go like this. We trade with one. This is 15. Opponent can pokey stick one of these guys, and we're only dealing 10. And opponent's. Oh. Wow. Are we actually just gonna win here? We might just straight up just win. If the opponent taps out of running negation, we just decimate. We can even play the rear guard out. I might just force the right of negation here anyways. Yeah, I think I just forced it out. If they don't have right of negation, we still just win. Because we're going to be wider than them. But I have the mana and I have no other cards in my hand, so might as well do it. We're still... Two more wider than them, opponents at one HP. Quicksand. Right of our king kills two units as well as get them a blocker, so I think it's just better to open attack. So yeah, the right of our king will have been too much of a punish because opponent can kill one unit and also summon a blocker. So GG's. 
Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's games. A lot of fast and quick games. I also tend to play really fast myself. I have played Perry Agro a lot ever since then its inception, like, like two years ago. So I do know how to play this deck a lot, even through the changes. That's why you do see me making a lot of plays super fast. There are times that I still misplay by playing so fast, as you saw sometimes the ordering, especially when you have Prince and Pigeon on the field, can matter a lot so just be mindful of that and how you order things which units you want to give your opponent first etc etc uh aside from that i mean there's not a lot more to say with this deck again for mulligan purposes you want to push as much damage as possible early on with units and then finish up with burn so you want to go for your one drops especially crimson pigeon rear guard is an amazing start saboteur too that way you're able to just kind of push a lot of impactful damage that can stick and get your opponent down below 10 by the start of turn three or turn four then eventually is when you transition to kind of go more for like a white bull revelers feast or fervor or decimate or the elusive kind of pushing a lot of damage that way it seems it ends up kind of working out really really well uh there is a consideration that maybe triple iron akaboros is better than double feast but i still do really like the feast for what it can potentially do against the opponents if opponents are not being careful so i prefer to play this over playing the triple draw but you know it can go either way in my opinion uh aside from that though i mean not a lot else to say just be careful i mean I feel, I feel like the times that we lost today, the Thrills game and the Aphelios deck, were opponents that played it really, really well and knew exactly how to play around Pyre Agro. If you're going against someone like that, it can be really tough because they know when they can pass to force you to have to do something first, right? Unfortunately, they also ended up getting kind of like the perfect answers. If there's any one of those turns where they don't get like, you know, one less Rabin puts the opponent in a really tough spot. Uh, one less, I don't know, um, yeah, one less Rabin puts the opponent in a tough spot in that Thrills game. If they have one less like blocker on the PNC game, we could have been getting there, etc. etc. Et that a loot travelers completely save them. Sometimes that's how the game goes, right? But you also saw other games where you get some crazy high rolls and you're just able to overwhelm your opponent before they're able to stabilize and do anything. So that, that's the nature of Pyro Agro. You're either gonna climb fast or lose fast. Either way, you're gonna get a lot more games done per hour, which eventually will let you kind of climb faster if you're able to keep like a 60% window with this deck or more. So yeah, if you're looking for climb, I recommend this. Uh, that'll be it for me today. Hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Eternal. We stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow.